Robert Seymour, The Great Joss and His Playthings, February 1829, hand-coloured etching. Collection of the Royal Pavilion Museums, Brighton Hove Laura Ford's work is unsettling, often anthropomorphic, sometimes weird and very frequently funny. Periodically it is to be found responding to historic settings, where the London-based sculptor has become renowned for her strange, dream-like narratives and for her ability to unsettle and amuse in equal measure. At Blackwell Arts and Crafts House in the Lakes she created a series of sculptures that included a series of weeping children set across the grounds in corners, crevices and woodlands whilst her armor boys, a creepy collection of collapsed and forlorn boys in medieval armor, have greeted visitors to galleries and locations across the UK and Europe. For her latest venture she is heading to Brighton as part of the house biennial with a new series of works called The King's Appetite, inspired by the collection of Brighton Museum Art Gallery, where she has found rich seam of stories and historical narratives, including the caricatures by the likes of James Gilray and George Cruikshank satirizing aspects of the life of the Prince Regent later to become King George IV. The resulting tableaus, which will occupy one of the museum's upper galleries and make an intervention next to a collection, includes a giant giraffe, like the one the Prince Regent kept towards the end of his life, and a man-baby ceramic sculpture, inspired by the royal himself. Attributed to Isaac Robert Cruikshank. Opening the Green Bag of the Fiends of Hell Let Loose, 8 July 1820. Collection of the Royal Pavilion Museums, Brighton Hove Laura Ford, Maquette for Green Bags, Queen. Courtesy Laura Ford I was terribly excited by the pavilion first of all, admits Ford when first approached to do the commission as a respond to Howe's biennial theme of excess but then I started going round Brighton Museum and there are particular objects that do really appeal. One of the first collections to catch her eye was the Willett Collection of Popular Pottery, a thematic assemblage of 18th-century domestic ceramic ware illustrating British popular history, collected by one of the museum's founding fathers, Henry Willett. It's right up my street, says Ford. I've been a huge fan of Staffordshire pottery from a very early age because I love the way it tells stories. Featuring everything from politics and crime to sport and religion, Willett's collection is bursting with stories. Most of the ceramic objects he collected spent much of their domestic life sat on mantelpieces and it's probably true to say that for all the mystery in her work, quite a lot of the Laura Ford tropes come from the English mantelpiece. When I was a kid there wasn't that much art around, but there were ornaments on the mantelpiece, she says, so in a way they were the kind of things I looked at, and I suppose I had fancies about them and deconstructed them or whatever. So even though it's not readily apparent, she says there's a strong sense of the domestic lurking inside Ford's work whether it be fabrics, ceramics or even the bronze it is fashioned from. A great actor not listed in the popular farce of Twood Puzzler Conjurer, August 1827. Hand-coloured etching. Collection of the Royal Pavilion Museums. Brighton Hove Laura Ford. Maquette for the King's Giraffe. Courtesy Laura Ford. Ford grew up in a fairground family and her childhood was spent touring Wales and the West Country before settling at the seaside, and the sights and s of the fairground are also an enduring influence on her work. I worked on the bingo for a long time, she says. There were loads of objects on the bingo cheap figurative things. They had a story and a sense of grandness, but of course they weren't grand at all. Given this grounding, the museum's collection of bizarre masks from the 1930s Les Ballets production also caught Ford's eye, but it is the influence of the collection of Regency cartoons and caricatures that will be seen most readily in the finished artwork. Throughout the day we were looking at the museum stuff, but on the way to having a cup of tea we stopped by all these political cartoons, just outside the tea room, and that's what really captured my imagination, she says. Around that time, it was the American elections and there were all these amazing political cartoons with Trump and Bannon, so I suppose I was becoming fascinated with the cartoons. There were particular ones that struck me as being interesting, like the giraffe, 1930s Les Ballets masks at Brighton Museum. Collection of the Royal Pavilion Museums, Brighton Hove Laura Ford, a work in progress for the King's Appetite. Courtesy Laura Ford The story of George IV and his giraffe is one of many tales of excess that abound around George IV. It was given to him by the Pasha of Egypt in 1827 as a diplomatic gift and lived in George IV's menagerie at Windsor, where for the last two years of his life he became a virtual recluse crippled by gout and obesity. I've made lots of giraffes before, says Ford, but there was something about George IV having a giraffe that's come all the way from Africa as a baby and him showing it off for a couple of years until it died. 
It is something fantastic, incredibly cruel yet slightly naive as well. It's interesting what came over, it would have been artifacts from Egyptian tombs, it would have been slaves, it would have been exotic animals so there is that certain kind of horror of it really. The story of the regent's divorce and protracted wrangle with his estranged queen, Caroline, also appealed to Ford, in particular the way the political cartoonists of the era referenced the green bags of money that came to symbolize the divorce settlement. I love the green bag stuffed of venom against each other, she says. In all of these political cartoons there's also the sense of judgment on George, but he was like a child. He was often depicted like a spoiled child. Ford's Man Baby sculpture depicts George in a crib, like some of the cribs that are in the Willop collection but looking more like a pie as well, she says. I do have an ambivalence towards him. Obviously he was this terrible, spoiled imperialist figure but he was also fabulously creative in terms of architecture and in terms of a lot of his projects. I suppose it's a bit like when you go round Roman villas, there's all this wonderful stuff but you know it was built by slaves. There's all this weird ambivalence as well and you think about the art world and who are we making artworks for, and all those sorts of things. Those are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. James Gilra, vices overlook it in the new proclamation, the 24th of May 1792, hand-coloured etching. Collection of the Royal Pavilion Museums, Brighton Hove The King's Appetite is at Brighton Museum and Art Gallery from September 30th. November 5, 2017. House Biennial happens across Brighton from September 30th to November 5, 2017. See housebiennial.art for more. Laura Ford will be in conversation with curator Alexandra Losk at Brighton Museum on September 30, 2017.